This video is supported by Brilliant.org. I put way too much work into this channel. Do you have any idea how many nights I stay up until the crack of dawn just obsessing over just the right structure and just the right words and just the right metaphors to, to get across some idea or concept that I barely even understand myself? Do you have any idea how many rabbit holes I go down every day trying to find some connection between different topics to make some boring topic more interesting? Do you know how many pills I take to keep my own sanity? I mean, they're vitamins, but still. And all the while, there are these channels like the Hydraulic Press channel that are way bigger than mine, and all they do is take a thing and put it in the Hydraulic Press and just smushes them. That's it. No commentary, no witty banter, no flaying his psyche for the whole world's entertainment. No, he's just, just a camera and a thing and a hydraulic press and a smush, and that's all he does. I mean, the balls on this guy to just put this up there and think that... that I mean, I mean, he doesn't, he doesn't even... <laughs> Whoa. I mean, I mean, it's not like he's telling us what's happening to these things physically and giving it any science of... Whoa! Alright, it's pretty compelling. So this is probably compelling because, you know, as humans we have this sort of natural appetite for destruction, we have this dark need to like see things torn apart, sure, but I think it may actually go deeper than this. Because as we're about to talk about, strange things happen in the universe when you put things under pressure. <laughs> Gravity is what makes the universe what it is today. I mean, yes, there would be a universe without gravity, but there wouldn't be anything that we recognize in it without the effect of gravity. And when I say gravity, I'm really talking about pressure. After the Big Bang, the universe was just a giant cloud of hydrogen gas with just a little bit of helium in it. And if it wasn't for gravity, it would have just stayed that way. Just, just a giant cloud. But there was gravity, so it didn't stay that way. It clumped. First in smaller clumps, and then in bigger clumps, and then bigger clumps swallowed smaller clumps until it pushed so hard in the center that those hydrogen atoms got squeezed together and formed helium atoms in massive explosions that we call stars today. The first stars had a practically infinite amount of hydrogen fuel to burn off of, so they were massive, and they burned hot, and they burned fast, and they consumed all of that hydrogen, fusing it all down into helium. And when there was enough helium and enough pressure in the core of the stars, that helium went through a fusion process called the triple alpha process to form carbon. And from there, it just fused up the chain, carbon to oxygen, then neon, magnesium, silicon, and eventually iron. Iron being one of the most stable elements in the universe, so it can't fuse any further from that. So once iron starts to build up in a core, the fusion reactor kind of shuts down and the entire star collapses down on itself and explodes in a giant supernova. And this collapse creates even heavier elements. Potassium, calcium, gold, radium, uranium, all the stuff that makes up you and everything around you right now was created in the core of stars and exploded out into the universe. All thanks to pressure. But even bigger stars have so much gravity that eventually even the atoms don't hold up anymore. The electrons and protons and atoms, which normally are repelled from each other because of electromagnetism, they get smooshed together so close and so tightly that it actually becomes energetically favorable for it to just turn into a neutron. So it does. It's like fusion, but for subatomic particles. And if the star is heavy enough, it'll collapse down to a singularity and form a black hole, one of the most mysterious objects in the universe. But there are stars that convert so many atoms into neutrons that the force of those neutrons push back against that collapse and create what's known as a neutron star. Black holes definitely wear the weird crown when talking about objects in the universe, but neutron stars aren't far behind. Neutron stars smush the mass of stars 20 times bigger than our sun down to something the size of a city, about 25 kilometers across. A teaspoon of a neutron star would weigh a billion tons here on Earth. They are the densest observable objects in the universe and are usually only observable because they bend light around them. And other crazy facts as well. They also create incredibly strong magnetic fields that shoot jets of x-rays from their poles all the way across the universe. Many of these spin really fast, causing those jets to flash in our direction at regular intervals. We observe these jets as pulses, and we call those stars pulsars. Pulsars, by the way, are called the lighthouses of the universe, and we think could be helpful for deep space navigation in the future. So yeah, neutron stars are crazy, but if neutron stars are weird, the core of a neutron star is super weird. It should be pointed out that we're kind of entering theoretical territory here, none of this has been confirmed or observed in any way, but the big crazy physics math says that all this should be possible. 
But just like atoms can fuse into bigger atoms and particles can fuse into neutrons, there is another level of fusion that can take place at the level of the particles that make up a neutron, quarks. Quarks come in several types, but by far the most common are the up and down quarks that make up neutrons. In particle accelerators, a whole mess of other types of quarks come flying out, like top and bottom quarks and charm and strange quarks, but these usually decay almost immediately under normal conditions. But you know what's not normal conditions? The core of neutron stars. The gravity and the pressure at the core of neutron stars is so strong that the neutrons kind of get smushed together and all fuse into each other and sort of just stop being neutrons altogether. And the quarks, which are normally confined to neutrons, which is why we call them confined quarks, uh, just start kind of roaming all over as free quarks and just sort of form a quark soup. And this is actually very similar to a period just milliseconds after the Big Bang when the entire universe was basically made up of quark soup. Mm-mm, good. Now obviously it's hard for us to know, maybe even impossible for us to know, what's going on at the core of neutron stars, but a lot of people think that this sort of quark matter might be in the core of every neutron star. And it might be possible, according to some, that there are some stars out there that are completely made of this quark soup, and we call them quark stars. Now there are no real confirmed quark stars out there just yet, but there are some candidates that we're looking at because of the fact that they lie at the center of supernova remnants. And they're very close to black holes because they're also very small, only about 16 kilometers across instead of 25, which neutron stars are. And they don't really emit light, but they do bend light around it. They do release neutrinos, though, but neutrinos are notoriously hard to detect. But let's just say those theoretical stars do exist. What kind of theoretical things could be going on in their theoretical cores? What happens when an entire star filled with the most dense material in the entire universe crushes down in on itself? What kind of crazy stuff happens under that kind of pressure? Well, believe it or not, the act of fusing might still not be done. It's possible that these up and down quarks can actually get forced together so hard that they fuse into a strange quark, a much heavier version of the quark, which I mentioned earlier. Strange quarks, which form strange matter. So how strange is strange matter? It's so strange that people who are used to dealing with neutron stars named it strange matter. Strange matter is a combination of up and down quarks and strange quarks, and in some ways it's almost like the most perfect form of matter in the universe. It's the most stable form of matter in the universe because it can't be fused down into anything else and it doesn't really combine with anything else. It's its, its own thing. And because it's more stable than normal matter, it kind of turns normal matter into strange matter. It's kind of like the vacuum decay thing, which I talked about before. If some tiny little piece of the quantum field, you know, went down to its lowest energy point, it would want to suck the rest of the universe down with it. And this isn't that dramatic. It doesn't immediately turn the whole universe into strange matter, but it does turn whatever it touches into strange matter. This also means that if the Earth ever came into contact with strange matter, it would turn the entire Earth into strange matter. Luckily for us, this is usually locked away in quark stars way out there far away from us, so we don't really have a whole lot to worry about. But before you put that existential dread away, we're not done yet. There's, there's, there's a little, little tiny chance that, yeah. In 2015, gravitational waves were first discovered by the LIGO Gravitational Wave Observatory. And this was from the collision of two black holes. But in 2017, we did get confirmation of a collision between two neutron stars. Literally like two seconds after the LIGO and Virgo observatories observed these waves, a uh, NASA satellite picked up a gamma ray burst, which kind of confirmed that this was from neutron stars. And visual confirmation was provided by telescopes in Chile, which showed a large flash of light in a particular place where they were expecting this to be. And this means that it couldn't be black holes because there wouldn't be any light if it was black holes. Neutron star collisions are massive. And if, say, one of them was a quark star and had some strange matter at its core, that strange matter would be flung out into the universe in tiny clumps called strangelets. And these strangelets would travel at nearly the speed of light and could possibly eventually reach Earth. And if they did reach Earth, even something the size of an atom would slowly devour our planet. It would turn this one strange rock into an actual strange rock. Luckily for everyone, strange matter is, to our knowledge, just theoretical. It's one of those things that math says should exist, but we have no proof that it exists. Having said that, gravitational waves were once math. Neutron stars were once just math. Neptune was once just math. So don't be surprised if in the coming years we get confirmation of an observed quark star. Just hope it doesn't hit anything. And you might be asking yourself, is there anything we can do to protect ourselves against this existential threat? And it actually turns out, no, no, there's nothing you can do. 
But seriously, as existential threats go, uh, this one is far less likely than some others that we should be worried about, so don't let this keep you up at night. But it does go to show that as weird as the universe can be, it can get a whole lot weirder. Under pressure. So what do you think? Is this something we should be worried about? Do you think strange stars exist? Do you know something I don't? Always possible. Talk about it down below. And if everything I just said sounded like the ravings of some lunatic who escaped from an asylum on his 6'4 loco, it might be because it's true, but it might be because you just kind of need a little bit more of a foundational understanding of these topics, and for that, I highly recommend Brilliant.org. Brilliant makes you smarter because it doesn't just tell you stuff, it actually teaches you how to figure things out for yourself. You know the whole thing, give a man strange matter for a day and, and he'll, you know, melt for a day. Teach him about strange matter and, and he'll live with crippling existential dread for the rest of his life. There are a couple of courses you might want to check out. Brilliant's Gravitational Physics course and the Quantum Objects course both get you all caught up on the stuff we're talking about here. Or if you just want to turn that brain of yours into an intelligence machine, check out the Daily Challenges feature where you can check in once a day, try your hand at some quick and interesting problems, get the smart juices flowing, and then teach yourself new things along the way. You can sign up for free at brilliant.org slash answers with Joe and get access to their weekly brain teasers and puzzles. And the first 200 people that sign up for the premium subscription, that gives you access to all their courses, can get 20% off your subscription for life. Seriously, if you enjoy this channel, you clearly enjoy learning things and Brilliant just sort of supercharges that learning ability. So definitely go check it out. Brilliant.org slash answers with Joe, links down in the description. Big thanks to Brilliant for supporting this channel and a huge shout out to the Answer Files on Patreon that are forming an awesome community, getting behind the scenes stuff, being cool. There's some new people that have joined. I gotta murder their names real quick. We got Jeremy Colasa, Lee T. Costic, Michael Hodges, Jace Curtid, uh, Vaughn Sheridan, Peter Scott, Brian Brochu, Dave Armstrong, Anno Inada, Matrum, Eric Roth, Matt Clark, Clark, <laughs> Jamie Marshall, uh, Gage Gossett, Eric Miles, and Zap Rousdauer. Zap Rousdauer. I want a name like that. How do you get a name like that? Uh, thank you guys so much. If you would like to join them, you can go to patreon.com slash answers with Joe. Please like and share this video if you liked it. And if this is your first time here, maybe check out this one that's gonna come up right here. Google thinks you'll like that one or any of the others. And if you like those, please do subscribe. I invite you to join us and I do videos every Monday and Thursday. You'll be the first to see them. Also, t-shirts available at the store. If you're wondering, if you're watching and wondering where I got this t-shirt, I have it for sale at the store, answerswithjoe.com slash shirts. They're a lot of fun stuff. Go check them out. All right, with that, I'm gonna bid you adieu. Thanks so much for watching. You guys go out now and have an eye-opening week and I'll see you next Monday. Love you guys. Take care.